Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Hometown Heroes Podcast with your host, Thomas Fallon. Today, we have a very, very special guest, Cannon Bauer. Thank you for coming on the show today. All right. Thank you for having me. Um, so today, we are going. I'm going to show you the video of his heroic acts and many others saving this lady and her children. And then we are going to ask him just a little bit of questions. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. So you can see, like, it's kind of hard to tell in this picture, but so the lady had a kid strapped to her back and she was holding one, right? Um, I'm not too sure. I was at the, I was across the street. Right. As from what I can tell is she was holding yeah. one. That's yeah. what it looked like. I think so. Mm -hmm. And then there was a couple bystanders uh, that were trying to help her out that I could see that were rushing from the store, you know, to help her. Um, I'm not sure where the man came from, or I think I heard that he was like there the night before and doing some other stuff, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, he, he was at the bus stop that morning. Okay. So and they were all waiting for the bus. Yeah, so I'm sure he was probably like scouting out stuff like that, you know, looking. I don't. Yeah, who knows? It's crazy. All right, let's see if we can. So load. So there's her kids, and that's the guy. And he is fighting that lady. He's punching her. Yeah, so that that's the guy right there. You can see the lady has the kid on her back, and maybe yeah. one in there. Uh, but yeah, this lady is going to take some shots from this guy, as you've seen previous. This is another angle. Um, yeah, so you're still – so right now, you were getting a drink at the gas station, right? Or tell me, you know, where you, you're at at this point. At, like, this point, I was already uh, in my truck turning around to head over. Okay. So you went to the gas station and you were getting gas, or what, what were you doing there? Um, yeah, I was getting gas, and I walked inside, got a drink, and when I came back out, that's uh, whenever they're outside and all the commotion was going on, you know? Mm -hmm. and so I as soon as I saw that happening I jumped in my truck and then I drove over there like as fast as I could and then they were already inside the store by the time I got there mm -hmm. so what what were you really thinking when that was going on I wasn't really I was just kind of reacting you know mm -hmm. my body was just kind of going on its own you know if, they, if that makes sense like I it was just going to go regardless, you know? Yeah. It was the, it's like that, they say that fight or flight, you know what I'm saying? They, yeah, exactly. Right. I, that's, I, I think that that's, that's what it was, you know? Right. Okay, so let's keep playing this, see if we can get a better view. So this guy with the hat's going to step in, take... So he's trying to uh, hold that door still, and that I think that lady got out. She was, you know, obviously taking some punches and, you know, whatnot. And I think you're going to arrive pretty soon here. Yeah. So, so how close was the gas station, you'd say, just across the street? Yeah, it's across the street. There's a, a couple lanes in between, but, yeah, it's just across the street. Mm -hmm. So how many people you think – were there, you know, trying to help or, or whatnot, or, you know, how many would you say? Uh, you're looking at it. It was maybe, a, like, a couple people, you know, uh, who stepped in and tried to do stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that guy right there is one of the only other men that stepped up to do something, you know? Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, I asked you what, what really was going on um, in your head, but, you know, at any point in time, were you – thinking about maybe that this guy could have a weapon or anything like that? 
honestly, that was like my biggest concern that whenever I was going in into the store. Um, cause I, as soon as I opened or as soon as I got to the door, I saw that guy right there covered in blood, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, cause I know he was hitting people, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. and then there was blood on the floor from that guy who was bleeding everywhere. And so I saw that. And then obviously I got like concerned thinking he had, uh, something to hit someone with, or maybe a knife or something, you know? Mm -hmm. But as soon as I, uh, closed the distance between us and I was like right, right behind him. I wasn't too worried anymore. Okay. So he's going to try and keep that door closed. Wow. So he's going to take a couple here. Ooh. Right there. You see? Yeah, that's, that's all that. Yeah. So you said that his, uh, his lip got cut, right? Yeah, like the side of his mouth was uh, busted open. Okay. Yeah, so you're probably, what, five seconds or how how from coming in or? Oh, I was like, as soon as he uh, ran outside, I was like right behind him. Okay. You <laughs> know, I think you can tell this guy may be calling the cops. I'm not sure if you can see where my cursor is. Oh, yeah. Is. Yeah, there's people outside calling 911 and stuff, but mm -hmm. I mean. That only can do so much. Right, for sure. Let's see, he's gonna run out. So I just want to stop that right quick. So you never come. This guy is probably gone with that that those children. Yeah, man, yeah. Because I mean, I mean, there's a lot of people trying to stop him, and he didn't have no trouble going through all of them. Right. Yeah, that's what I just wanted to point out because. You know, the, the what do you say, probably five minutes? You pin that, you'll see, you'll pin that guy for probably about five minutes, you think? It was longer than that. It was yeah. Like, yeah, it was a while I was holding it down. So he probably would have been gone with that, gone with them. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what he was really thinking in general because it was a bad location. Like, um, he didn't have a vehicle. Like, mm -hmm. he couldn't drive away. There's no, there's nothing because New Mexico, there's not really stuff around that gas station to like okay. run to. Okay. Fields and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. it, and there's a highway next to it. So there's like not really anywhere to go. Okay. So I was just, that's kind of like, it baffles me, you know, like why this happened. Right. Like it's, right. it's already, it's already crazy that people kidnap kids in general and that doesn't make sense to me. But to do it in this time of the day, this location, I was just, I don't, I don't get it. Right. The mindset that they have to have to even do this, but to, to have the brains, you know, to do it at this time of day, stuff like that, it's just doesn't, I, yeah. we, we, we don't, we don't understand it, but let's keep uh, playing. So that's you right there coming in. Yeah, that's me. Okay. So here you have him um, pinned on the floor. Yeah, he was on his back. And then as soon as I ran in and grabbed him, put him on his back, all those ladies came and, like, kind of jumped on me. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad they tried to help and everything. I think I would have been probably a little bit better off if they stayed back, though. Right. They're just in the way a little bit. But, I mean, they were doing the right thing, you know? Mm-hmm. For sure. And now, it's better that it's something than nothing. Yeah. So how far back was he? Like, did you – because it doesn't show – you know what I mean? It doesn't show the angle of where yeah. you got him. So, you know, where he was he at when, when you met him? Yeah. Okay. So right um, in front of that table, but all the mm -hmm. way against the wall where you can't see, is uh, an employees-only area to go in the back behind the refrigerators or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where the family had ran into to get cover, you know? Mm -hmm. They all ran in there, and she was holding the door back. And uh, whenever I ran in, he was, uh, like, kicking down the door, you know? Mm -hmm. And there was no one else in the store. You saw everyone ran out and closed the doors. Right. 
uh, he was uh, kicking in, like throwing his shoulder into it, trying to get that door open. He had it like halfway open too um, by the time I got there. Mm -hmm. Wow. So did you just, when you saw him, was he like surprised to see you or like did you just throw him on the ground or, you know, what happened there? He didn't see me until we were on the ground. Um, but because he was facing away from me, hitting that mm -hmm. door. Yeah. Uh, I just grabbed him um, from behind. Uh, and like I, it was uh, my chest against his back. And I just pulled him out into the open area of the store and put him on his back. That was it pretty much. Yeah. So let's just uh, keep playing. Let's see if this loads here. So you're going to see here, I saw that you had his arms sort of like uh, up above his head. Yeah, sort of. I mean, I wasn't really uh, trying to do anything necessarily. Right. I was just trying to keep him down and detained. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, uh, since I'm a wrestler, a lot of wrestling people have seen it. And they ask, like, oh, what move did you do and all this stuff, you know? Right. But like I said, like it wasn't really a move that I know or I was trying to do. It was just more of a reaction, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, but I would, what I could see is, you know, his hand. You'll see maybe too is it, it looked like his hands were up, and that that gave no chance of him, you know, reaching for anything in his pockets or anything sort of, yeah. you know, weapon like that, which I thought was good. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, above my head to like kind of. Try and get mm -hmm. me in like some kind of headlock, something right, like I that. that. Yeah, and, and I just walked up into it, and uh, he, right. uh, he was where he didn't know what he was doing. Right. So you can see this guy's not going anywhere. Yeah, no. I weighed 280 pounds, you know. That's a lot of weight on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what you did was something that was that was amazing, you know. You, you know, I saw in another interview, too, you said, you know, you didn't want to be the one that just didn't do anything and just, you know, stood there, you know, didn't do anything. So I think, you know, that was great of you to do that. Yeah. yeah. Keep playing this out. So she grabs a, a, a wet floor sign. Yeah. Yeah. They were yelling at him the whole time. You said they were yelling? Yeah, cussing at him, saying all kinds of stuff. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, he was just wailing on her, you know? Obviously, she's going to be mad. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. So how – you said it was longer than five minutes you were pinning him. How long do you think, uh, you know, you had him on the floor for? I think it was like seven to ten minutes. Oh, wow. I think. I'm not 100% sure because it was a while ago. Mm -hmm. But it was a while. Yeah. I wonder how close, you know, the nearest police station was even to, you know, this area. If you were saying there's, you know – um woods around you know the area stuff like that yeah it's because this is all the way out where i live in doniana and mm -hmm. that's like it's not really that uh populated i guess you could say okay there's not that much uh big stuff around there mm -hmm. i mean i know we got a fire station right there real close but the police stations in cruises oh okay so let's just watch some more of this. So he tried to move and he's just not going anywhere. Yeah, he put up a fight um, for about the first. 30 seconds he tried to get out of it um and then once i got him on the ground 
he gave up. Like every now and again, he'd wiggle around and he'd mm-hmm. start going again. But then, uh, yeah, he was he he couldn't do nothing. Right. She's ready to hit. Yeah, she was mad. She did hit him, actually. Yeah. Oh, she put her – oh, there. Yeah, that's where she hit him right there. Yeah. Were, were you – I saw your hand go up. Were you telling her to stop or – I was telling her to stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, why, why, did, why did you want her to stop? You know, what was your, your thought? Yeah, I, mean, I know he's the bad guy and all, and, like, yeah, we should be, like, beating him up. Like, he was hitting all them and everything. But he's, he was already on the ground. He was defenseless. The problem was resolved, and he wasn't doing any more damage, you know, so there was no need to keep harming him. Oh, I, I totally agree with you. You know, I think many people – would have probably wanted to, but you know, your mindset. I, I think we kind of think like in that, like he was, you know, he was defenseless, and yeah. So mm-hmm. I think that's a really good uh, thing that you just said there. So let's see, so yeah, she can see. I don't know how. Okay, so see, try to move a little bit. Um. Oh, so she kicks him too. Yeah, she kicked him in the ribs. I oh, forgot wow. about that. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah. But that was, that was the last time. She only hit him in she was uh she hit him in the head with the sign and I think kicked him or something, and then she kicked him in the rib. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna But he did way more damage. Yeah, oh for sure. Well, especially to that the man with the red hat on, you know, he probably yeah. would. You know, I saw him come in, but he didn't do anything uh, to him. So yeah, mm-hmm. I, just, I think. Is, oh no, I thought that was. Oh, there he is. So that's they only brought one cop. Yeah, that was the first guy who showed up. Was that guy? Okay, so he's just gonna come in here and take over, and he's gonna yeah. We just bots and that guy laid there. He was done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then, you know, you're just going to get, you know, hugs and. Yeah. Did they take a statement from you or, you know, what happened after that? Yeah, they had to, just like any other uh, thing, we had to, uh, he, we got a detective there and he took my ID and got the mm-hmm. story and everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know. What was your, you know, I know people ask you this a lot, but what was your parents' reactions to, you know, to this whole thing? My parents' reactions, uh, I mean, a little, well, worried at first, you know, whenever they hear that, uh, but they were proud of me like everyone else was. Yeah. You know, so going forward, what do you want people to really take out, take away from the situation that you were in? Um, I just that, uh, like if you see something that needs to be done, like if uh, someone's in trouble or if they need help, it's better to at least involve yourself, like try than to just stand by and something happen, you know, and then you, cause you'll be thinking later, like if that person did get kidnapped, I would be sitting in my room saying, looking at the news, watching it saying I was across the street right when that happened, you know? Mm-hmm. And I have the abilities to potentially help. And if I didn't do nothing, you know, right. Who what would have happened? Yeah. That's, I feel like that's like, I don't know. Sometimes they call it like survivors, you know, guilt or, you know, exactly like survivors guilt type. Right. Thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, How have sports, you know, playing football and wrestling now, how have sports helped you, you know, in that situation? And, you know, you say everyday life now, you know. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, honestly one of the reasons I joined wrestling is just so I could uh, protect myself a little better. Mm -hmm. Um, Because people fight. That's just the thing that happens, you know. And 90% of the times in fights, it ends up on the ground. Um, 
it's just inevitable and you need to know what to do down there. You need to know, I just need to know how to protect myself in general. Like I'm a big guy and I can protect myself already, but the more knowledge, the better. And, uh, I think it just gave me more confidence, uh, and trust in myself and my abilities to do what I did. Exactly. Wow. That's, I like that. Um, so how have times really changed since, you know, your heroic acts? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, uh, I'm kind of like, uh, the town, like the local hero type deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, people recognize me, uh, wherever I'm going, you know, not everyone will say like, uh, Hey, or are you the kid from the gas station? And that's not how I introduce myself either. Um, like, I, like my friends and, uh, coworkers and stuff, every time I meet someone new, um, I also say, Hey, can't, my name's Kenny, you know, just like any other time I meet someone and they'll immediately say, you remember the kid from the gas station who started the kidnapping or whatever. And, uh, and they'll be like, that's him. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, that's not the way I like to introduce myself, you know? Right. You know, as we were talking about that a little bit and it's like, you didn't do it for you know, fame, you didn't yeah. do it for anything like that. You did it because you wanted to help and, you know, they needed your help and they were in need and you, mm -hmm. you did it because of that, you did it for them. You did it. Yeah. You know, you didn't do it for anything else like that. And every time, every time someone uh, congratulates me or tells me how proud they are of me or for what I did, you know, mm -hmm. I just tell them uh, that honestly, I'm just glad that it worked out the way it did and that I was there when I was. And that, because even if I still was there and I still ran in the story, it still could have been different. You know, I could got, I could have been just like the other guy, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It could have been a different story, but I'm just, I'm thankful that it happened the way that it did. Right. You know, what advice would you give to someone that could potentially be in a position like yours or, you know, similar to yours? You know, what advice would you give to that person? um do your best you know i mean just act upon it you know like don't be a bystander mm -hmm. yeah so would you say that you know if you ever see you know someone you know doing that there you know and you may be you know not like a wrestler or not you know you should help in any way you can, you know, it doesn't have to be yeah. like, you know, you, you have a wrestling background, you know, knowing how to, you know, pin that stuff like that. But, you know, in any way you can, you should, you know, always try and help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's like those other people, they were helping, you know, they don't, they don't know how to wrestle. They are not district champions, you know, they don't, they're just everyday workers, you know? Right. I think more people should be like them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I saw in another interview, is you, you talked about that family aspect that football has and that wrestling has. You know, could you talk a little bit about that and how that kind of helped you, you know, in, you know, your life and in, in, in this position that you were put into? Um, the family aspect of, like, wrestling and stuff, mm -hmm. um, I, it's just – it's different than any other sport I've ever been in. It's uh, everyone – like regardless of what team or school you play for or whatever like that, um, everyone helps each other out. Everyone talks about each other's moves and like, oh, what's going to happen and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Like on any other sport, like that just doesn't happen. You know, you have your rivals and like you don't practice with other schools. You don't talk to other schools. You just let it happen out on the field, you know? Right. But in wrestling, it's just completely different. Like we – Sometimes we'll practice with kids who go to different schools than us, you know, just because we want to, just because we're all friends like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's definitely a different way of, you know, sort of way of life, you know? Yeah. And, you know, that can relate to what you did, you know, you, no matter who you are, or, you know, where you're from, we can always help you, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter where you're from, you know, who you are, you know, it's just, I, so I think that I can, that correlates a little bit to, you know, your situation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we always, you know, other guests here on my show, I've always said that sports help you in everyday life. They help you make critical, you know, decisions. They help you, oh, yeah. you know, 
in life. Yeah, I definitely agree. And that's, like I said, that's one of the reasons I joined wrestling, you know, so I could just have that more of like a instinct to do stuff and like a, like what I said, like a reaction. Um, but so that's like, has some training behind it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cause like I, if I didn't wrestle, I'd probably still react the same way I did. I don't know how it would go though. Um, Cause this time I wasn't trying to do any moves, but my body, my body just naturally did the moves cause I've been practicing them every day, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm very thankful that I joined wrestling and decided to do it right. for those reasons, you know? Yeah, for sure. So last question I have for you is, you know, with all this publicity and, you know, Dana White, you know, tweeting about you, you know, what, what's your reaction and what, how has that experience really been for you? I mean, like I said again, uh, it's it's all it's kind of surreal, you know. Everyone, especially like Dana White, you know, that's crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm just glad that everything happened the way that it did, and everything. Everyone who's been reaching out to me, uh, right. sending one stuff or whatever, uh, wanting to have podcasts and things. Uh, I'm very thankful. Well, I appreciate it, and I enjoy doing all this stuff. Um, but like, that's not the reasons I did it. I'm I'm glad that it's happening. I'm glad um, people are recognizing me for it. But I'm just happy that it's it's okay. Like it worked out the way that it did. For sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I know you've been busy, and I know you know it's been very you know busy and stuff like that so i really appreciate it you know this is my first ever you know you you mm -hmm. just turned 17 so happy birthday but real like age group you know what i'm saying like yeah based, you know interview and it was great uh so thank you for you know s stepping up and you know doing your heroic acts and you know i really appreciate it i think everyone's feeling those effects all around the world yeah you know so thank you thank you thank you for having me on your show well, I hope you have a, a wonderful wrestling season. I hope, you know, that stays the plan with the coronavirus and all that. So, Yeah, um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, we'll so, hope it's the best. Yes. So good luck in your training and everything you do in life. So I appreciate you coming on again. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. You too. Be safe. You too. Thank you. Just want to say thank you for coming on you know he's in new mexico which is 9 a.m time now i'm filming this at 11 uh, a.m so the time difference thank you for you know everything you did and to all the people that were there helping you know um the bystanders the people that are putting their life on the line for you know the, those people you know the kids and the ladies so uh thank you again for coming on ken and you're a hero and you've influenced inspired me and I've had so many others, so thank you for coming on, and thank you for watching today. Hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.